and they are perfectly loosed from it. Firstly, when the species of government becomes opposite to the ends of government and has turned tyranny, especially when a legal establishment is pretended, then it affects with its contagion the very species itself. The house is to be pulled down when the leprosy is got into the walls and foundation. Secondly, when it is exercised, it is turned inept for answering the ends of its erection and prejudicial to the main thing for which government is given to it, the gospel and the coming of Christ's kingdom. Hence it is promised to the church. Isaiah 49, verse 23, quote, Kings shall be nursing fathers to the church, unquote. And Isaiah 52, verse 15, it is promised to the mediator that, quote, Kings shall shut their mouths, unquote i.e., never a word in their head, out of reverence and respect to his absolute sovereignty, they shall take the law from him, without daring to contract, far less to take upon them to prescribe in the house of God, as they in their wisdom think fit. Thirdly, when providence, without any sinful hand, makes the species impossible to be kept up, without the ruin of that for which it was erected, when things come to this push, Whosoever are clothed with the power are then under an obligation to comply with that alteration of providence for the safety of the people, else they declare themselves unworthy of rule, and such who would sacrifice the interest of their people to their particular interest, in which case the people may make their public servant sensible. He is at, highest, uh, he is at his highest elevation, but a servant. Hence now, when this species, named in the covenant, that is, monarchy, is by law so vitiate, as it becomes the mean and instrument of the destruction of all the ends of that covenant, and now by law transmitted to all successors as a hereditary, pure, perfect, and perpetual opposition to the coming of Christ's kingdom, so that as long as there is one to wear that crown, but Jehovah will in righteousness execute Coniah's doom upon the race, Jeremiah 22, quote, write this man childless, unquote, and enter heir to the government as now established, he must be an en enemy to Christ. There is no other way left but to think on a new model molded according to the true pattern. As to the second, we are far less obliged to own and acknowledge the interest of any of the two monarchs that we have been mourning under these many years from these sacred covenants. For, as to the first of them, Charles the second, those considerations did cassate his interest as to any covenant obligation to own him. Firstly, in these covenants, we are not sworn absolutely to maintain the king's person and authority, but only conditionally in the preservation and defense of religion and liberties. Now, when this condition was not performed, but on the contrary, professedly resolved never to be fulfilled, and when he laid out himself to the full of his power and authority for the destruction of that reformed religion and liberties of the kingdom, which he solemnly swore to defend when he received the crown, only in terms that he should be a loyal subject to Christ and a true and faithful servant to the people, in order to which a magistrate is chosen, and all his worth, excellency, and valuableness consists in his answering that purpose. For the excellency of a mean, as such, is to be measured from the end and its answerableness thereto. We were not then obliged to maintain such an enemy to these precious interests. Secondly, because, as the people were bound to him, so he was bound to them by the same covenant, being only on these terms entrusted with the government, all which conditions he perfidiously broke, whereupon only his authority and our allegiance were founded, and thereby we were loosed from all reciprocal obligation to him by virtue of that covenant. Thirdly, Though he and we stood equally engaged to the duties of that covenant, only with this difference, that the king's capacity being greater, he was the more obliged to have laid out that power in causing all to stand to their covenant engagements, as Josiah did in Second Chronicles 34, verses 31, 32, and 33. But alas, there was never a Josiah in the race. Yet he rose up to the height of rebellion against God and the people, in heaven-daring insolency, and not only break, but burnt that covenant, and made laws to cast and rescind it, and made a not concurring in this conspiracy, a note of incapacity for any trust in church or state. Therefore to plead for an owning of him in this case were only concludent of this, that the generation had dreamed themselves into such a distraction as may be feared will be pursued with destruction, and make such dreamers the detestation of posterity, and cause all men proclaim the righteousness of God in bringing ruin upon them by that very power and authority they owned in such circumstances. Fourthly, it is a known maxim, quote, He that does not fulfill the conditions falls from the benefit of it, and whoso remits the obligation of the party obliged upon condition cannot exact it afterwards.
unquote. So then it is evident that the subjects of Scotland were, by King Charles II, his consent, yea, express command, disengaged from so much of that covenant as could be alleged in favors of himself, so that all that he did, by burning and rescinding these covenants, and pursuing all who endeavored to adhere to them, was a most explicit liberating his subjects from, and remission of their allegiance to him. And in this, we have had been fools if we had not taken him at his word. Yea, he rescinded his very coronation by an act of his first parliament after his return, which did declare null and void all acts, constitutions, and establishments from the year 1633 to that present session, not accepting those for his own coronation, after which he was never recrowned, and therefore we could not own that right which himself did annul. But as for his royal brother James the Seventh and Second, we cannot indeed make use of the same reasons and arguments to disown him as we have now adduced. Yet, as we shall prove afterwards, this covenant does oblige to renounce him. So it is so clear that it needs no illustration that there lies no obligation from this covenant to own him. Firstly, because as he is an enemy to the whole of our covenant, and especially to these terms upon which authority it is to be owned therein, so he will not come under the bond of this covenant, nor any other compact with the people, but intrude himself upon the throne in such a way as overturns the basis of our government and destroys all the liberties of a free people, which by covenant we are bound to preserve and consequently as inconsistent therewith to renounce his usurpation. For a prince that will set himself up without any transactions with the people or conditions giving security for religion and liberty is a usurping tyrant, not bounded by any law but his own lusts. And to say to such an one, reign thou over us, is all one as to say, come thou, and play the tyrant over us, and let thy lust, and will be thy, and will be a law to us, which is both against scripture and natural sense. If he be not a king upon covenant terms, either expressly or tacitly, or general stipulations according to the word of God and laws of the land, he cannot be owned as a father, protector, or tutor, having any seduciary power entrusted to him over the commonwealth, but as a lawless and absolute dominator, assuming to himself a power to rule or rage as he lists, whom to own were against our covenants, for there we are sworn to maintain his majesty's just and lawful authority, and by consequence not to own usurpation and tyranny, stated in opposition to religion and liberty, which there also we are engaged to maintain. Sure, this cannot be lawful authority which is of God, for God hath given uh, for God giveth, excuse me, no power against himself, nor can it be of the people who had never power granted them of God to create one over them with a liberty to destroy them, their religion and liberty, at his pleasure. Secondly, as he is not, nor will not, be our covenanted and sworn king, and therefore we cannot be his covenanted and sworn subjects, so he is not, nor cannot be our crowned king, and therefore we must not be his liege subjects owning sealty and obedience to him. For, quote, according to the national covenant, as all lieges are to maintain the king's authority, consistent with the subject's liberties, which, if they be innovated or preju prejudged, excuse me, such confusion would ensue, as this realm could n be no more a free monarchy. So, for the preservation of true religion, laws, and liberties of this kingdom, it is statute by the 8th Act, Parliament 1, repeated in the 99th Act, Parliament 7th, ratified in the 20, uh, 23rd Act, Parliament 11th, and 14th Act, Parliament 12th, of King James the Sixth, and 4th Act of King Charles the First, that all kings and princes, at their coronation and reception of their princely authority, shall make their faithful promise by their solemn oath, in the preference of the eternal God, that enduring the whole time of their lives they shall serve the same eternal God to the uttermost of their power, according as he hath required in his most holy word, contained in the Old and New Testaments, and according to the same word, shall maintain the true religion of Christ Jesus, the preaching of his holy word, the due and right ministration of the sacraments, now received and preached within this realm, according to the confession of faith immediately preceding, and shall abolish and against and all false religion, contrary to the same, and shall rule the people committed to their charge according to the will and command of God, revealed in his foresaid word, and according to the laudable law and constitutions received in this realm, no way is repugnant to the said will of the eternal God, and shall procure to the uttermost of their power, to the kirk of God, and whole Christian people, 
true and perfect peace in all time coming, and that they shall be careful to root out of their empire all heretics and enemies to the true worship of God, who shall be convicted by the true kirk of God of the foresaid crimes." Unquote. Now, this coronation oath he hath not taken, he will not, he cannot take, and therefore cannot be our crowned king according to the law. As there be also many other laws incapacitating his admission to the crown, being a professed papist, and no law for it at all, but one of his own making, by a packed cabal of his own compliances, a parliament wherein himself presided as commissioner, enacting materially his succession, and rescinding all these ancient laws, which act of secession, which is all the legal right he can pretend to in Scotland, because it cannot be justified. Therefore his right cannot be owned, which is founded upon the subversion of our ancient laws. But as he cannot be our legally crowned king, so he is not so much as formally crowned. And therefore, before his inauguration, whatever right to be king, whom the representatives may admit to the government, he may pretend to by hereditary succession, yet he cannot formally be made king till the people make a compact with him upon terms for the safety of their dearest and nearest liberties, even though he were not disabled by law. He might, as they say, pretend to some right to the thing, but he could have no right in the thing. The kings of Scotland, while uncrowned, can exercise no royal government, for the coronation in concrete, according to the substance of the act, is no ceremony as they, who make conscience itself, but a ceremony, call it, nor an accidental ingredient in the constitution of a king, but as a distinctive, so it is constitutive as distinguished Saul from all Israel, and made him no king to be a king. It is dative, and not only declarative, but puts some honor upon him that he had not before. Thirdly, though the laws should not strike against his coronation, and though the representatives legally should take the same measures with him that they took with his brother, and admit him upon the terms of the covenant, Yet after such doleful experiences of such transactions with these sons of Belial, who must not be taken with hands, nor by the hand, it were hard to trust or entrust them with the government, even though they should make the fairest professions, since they whose principles is to keep no faith to heretics, as they call us, and who will be as absolute in their promises as they are in their power, have deservedly forfeited all credit and trust with honest men, so that none could rationally refer the determination of a half-crown reckoning to any of them, far less own them and their government in the management of the weightiest affairs of state, since their, malver since their malversations excuse me, are written in such bloody characters as he that runs may read them. At least it were wisdom, and is our duty, to take our measures from the General Assembly's procedure with the other brother before his admission to the government to suspend our allegiance to him until authority be legally devolved upon him and founded upon and bounded by terms giving all security for religion and liberty. Twelfthly, as I said, before wary prudence in waiving such an impertinent, an impertinent excuse me, and ticklish question cannot be condemned, since whatever he may be in conscience, no man in law can be obliged so far to surrender the common privilege of all mankind, to give an account of all his inward thoughts, which are always said to be free. And as in nothing they are more various, so in nothing they can be more violented, than to have our opinion and sentiments of the, cru of the current government extorted from us, a declining of which declaration of thoughts, where no overt act and project or practice can be proven against it, cannot be treason in any law in the world, so a cautelous answer in such a ticklish and entrapping imposition cannot be censured in point of lawlessness or expediency, even though much be conceded to stop the mouths of these bloody butchers, gaping greedily after the blood of the answerer, if he do not really own, but give them to understand he cannot approve of this tyranny.